What's happening, everybody? So in this video, I'm going to cover three things. The first one is what is the current status of the Astro build. Two is what can you expect from the upcoming uh, build series with this thing. I'm going to build it out into a simplistic uh, van build for $500 or less with the exception of the uh, power setup, the solar and the power and the roof vent because I already have those things, so they don't really count. But you can get by without them for a little while, maybe. Um, I don't recommend it, but that's not going to be included in the $500 or less build out. So I want to be very clear about that. I don't want to mislead anybody. And the third one is I want to talk about what, uh, what I did well and what I'm going to do differently next time as far as uh, the build outs on this go, because I've built this thing out several times now. So the current state of it is... Well, you can see for yourself, I've got the front end completely as disassembled as I can get it without taking the dash apart. Uh, and the reason for that is it's extremely difficult to pull this dash out, and I just don't want to do it. This is far enough. I'm basically just going to wipe everything down with vinegar and clean it out. I'm going to pull this out and clean it. Otherwise, I'm going to leave that and then put everything else back in, except for the driver's seat. I'm going to try my hardest to find a new driver's seat. Uh, it's just totally worn out. This thing's got about 260,000 miles on it, and the driver's seat's just gone. Passenger seat's great, though. Uh, it's got the swivel seat on it, which I, I absolutely love. That's going to be an integral part of this uh, build in such a small space. It's very important to have a swivel seat, to me anyway. So, um, once all that's done, I will be putting in the floor, and then the headliner, and the walls, and figuring out something for the windows. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Just to give you a very brief idea of my overall plan, there's a lot of the details I'm still working out and I will need your guys' help with as well. Uh, the bed is gonna go in the back, up against the back doors, and it's gonna be a full-size bed, so it'll come out to about here. The, fir the first time I built it out, which nobody's seen, because I didn't, don't even have pictures of, I don't think, uh, the bed was going this way and there was nothing over here. It was just foot room, and then there was a little bit of storage up here. That didn't work out. That was too much of a hassle. So when you guys saw my first videos with this fan, I had the bed going this way, but it was a twin size bed. So my feet hung off the edge, which when it was cold out was really, I didn't like. I had to sleep curled up and I, I felt really constrained and wanted to stretch out. So that's why the next time the bed was going this way again. Uh, with a full size mattress going this way, it's gonna take up a lot of space. It's gonna come out to about here, but I, that's gonna be okay if I can figure out a way to lift the bed platform up to access storage underneath this way instead of having to pull from under. So that'll be okay. Um, other than that, there's gonna be storage over here. Haven't decided if I wanna go all the way up or if I want to do it at about window level, I'm pretty certain that I want to completely block off this window, those two windows, and that window, and I might be completely blocking off that one as well. Um, we'll see about that. I'm still figuring that out. So that's, that's my overall plan. So what worked and what didn't work all the times that I've built it out? Well, I already talked about the twin size mattress going this way. I'm only 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, I'm pretty short. And uh, putting the bed this way in Astro did not, I couldn't stretch out all the way. If you're probably 5'6", five, 5'5", five, five or less, that could work great for you. Anyone taller, it's not going to work putting the bed that way in an Astro. So, um, so that didn't work. The, the, other, the next thing that didn't work is the floor. I had laminate wood flooring in here, and that didn't work at all. It, the winter in Oregon is usually, I don't know, I'm kind of pulling numbers out of my butt right now, but I think 60 to 80% humidity is about accurate. Very, very high humidity for a very long time. That's why I had mold in here. And the floor, because it was wood, as, as the air is moist, it the wood expands and fills up with all that water. So it was just holding all that water. So it was, it was molding and it was very heavy and it was getting really warped and weird looking kind of all over the place. So this time I'm going to go with vinyl flooring for sure. No, uh, no way around that. And uh, I'm considering if I can find it cheap enough and buy enough boxes, I might use the, the vinyl flooring to go all the way up the sides and do the ceiling as well if I can figure out how to do that easily. Only problem is that's very heavy and I want to try to make this lightweight. So anyway, uh, wood is out, bare wood, wood floors, totally out, vinyl all the way in. Uh, the next thing that worked is these uh, these side panelings that I have, this white wood right here. That is painted with uh, mold proof paint and no mold grew on that at all. It went really, really well. And also, um, before I did that, I used the mold proof paint, these seals that are in here, these factory seals. This is just like some kind of caulk. 
I painted those with the mold proof paint and that prevented them from molding as well. And I noticed uh, all the other times that I had mold, those were just like factory. They weren't painted with the mold proof stuff and they had a lot of mold on them. So that prevented the problem here. Uh, one of my buddies suggested painting everything in here with mold proof paint and that is a really good idea. I don't know if I need to do that here because I had mold in several places, mostly on the steering wheel, the seat belts, the seats, the floors, and the headliner, which was raw Luan. Um, but I didn't, neither Evie or I found any mold on the metal surfaces. So maybe that's not fully necessary. Definitely with any organic materials, wood, uh, I definitely would. So uh, wood, wood. Uh, the next thing that worked really well is the thin slate insulation. Um, the problem with this is I don't know where you can get it. It seems like you can only buy it in bulk. I've a, a friend gifted me the stuff that I used in this van, and I was talking to someone who had some extra, but I can't remember who it was who was thinking about sending me some. So if that's you, I would love to take you up on that and use some more thin slate in this uh, this build the next time. But that did not mold at all either, which is awesome. So the thin slate is definitely good mold proof insulation. It's lightweight. It doesn't hold water, and uh, it works pretty well. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm psyched about that. Um, as I said, the the bare luon on the ceiling that molded mostly right here where the uh, solar cables came in. I made the mistake of, uh, and actually you can still see the bubble gum up here. I, if you've been watching me for a while and you were watching when I was in Phoenix uh, putting a new engine in this thing, I had a really bad leak one night there and I went, I walked to the store, got some bubble gum and I was trying to patch it up with bubble gum. It didn't work at all, but the gum's still up there. But anyway, the, the real mistake was I drilled a hole through the roof and stuck the cables through and then put some uh, silicone sealant around it. And I was hoping that that would hold, but I think what happened is over time, like the wind, so the cables are just sitting, I don't know if you can see them, there's really no way to see them. The cables are just sitting up there. So as the wind is blowing while you're driving, they're like vibrating and moving around and that broke the seal. So that's where that leak came from. And to no surprise, there was a big uh, circle of mold right here. So instead of doing that, from now on, what we did on the big van is we bought this uh, plastic thing. I'll try to remember to put a, a, a picture of it on the screen right now and a link in the description and uh, first comment. But we bought this little plastic thing that you glue onto the top of your van and then it has uh, two holes in it that are rubber sealed that seal the cables to go through. So that creates a nice waterproof connection where you won't have this issue anymore. So I will be doing that from now on. Um, Let's see, what else worked and didn't work? Oh, the seals on this fan. Um, I'll talk about this more later, but basically the, the back door seals, these guys, are pretty much destroyed on this fan. I cleaned them off and coated them with silicone, and it helped a lot, a whole lot but it didn't completely fix the problem. So I do have a very small leak in the back. It seems to only leak when it rains really heavily. So on this van, I'll have the bike on the back of it anyway. I'm not gonna need to access the very back. So I'll probably just tape it up on this van because you cannot buy the seals anywhere except for junkyards. And uh, finding good examples in a junkyard might be tough, might not. Maybe I'll get lucky and find some uh, really good ones. I don't know. Anyway, that's pretty much it for now. Um, oh, also, the, when I build this thing out, I'm gonna do the PVC bed frame again. I just gotta find a strong, lightweight, ventilated material that's hopefully not wood and hopefully not something I have to cut with power tools because I can't use power tools here except for drills. So hopefully I can figure something out for the platform for the top of the bed that's nice and light that I can figure out a way to you know open up anytime I need to to access storage under it. But that's about it for today, guys. Just wanted to make this real quick video. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about doing one on things to look for on your van before you start building and things to do before you start building. I've made a, you know, a preparation video or two in the past, but I only talked about that particular van and there's more things I think you should look for. So you might see that coming up. The next one might be uh, this interior just back together. I don't want to film the cleaning and everything because there's still mold in here and I'm already getting itchy and my eyes are starting to burn. I've got, I'm very allergic to mold. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Love you all safe.